to tell you today about 10 surprising things that I learned in 2016. Number one, I learned that I love weightlifting. You guys, I never in a thousand years would have thought that I would love weightlifting. My husband challenged me um, near the beginning of the year to do something more with exercise and I didn't know what to do and he was weightlifting and so I thought, you know what, I'm just, I'm just going to try it. So I did and I fell in love, fell in love with weightlifting and I fell in love with just the whole you know, the endorphins that you get from going out and doing something you feel like you can't do and then getting better and better and better until a weight that maybe two months ago would have felt completely impossible, you can rock it. Number two, I learned that I am not as introverted as I always thought that I was. So I went on this trip to Israel and Italy for 10 days, yes, all the way around on the other side of the world by myself and there were about 20 to 25 people on this trip it, they some people came and go came and went so it changed but there are about 20 to 25 people on this trip and I really didn't know but maybe a few of them and it was very 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 scary and I didn't want to go and I tried to talk my husband out of saying that he really thought that I should go and being with people all day long in a tour bus you know in these groups all the day long from 7 a.m. until 10 p.m. with people I didn't know for 10 days straight and surviving when I came back home it gave me this new sense of like man I can be with people I can be with people that I don't know. I can make conversation all day long and I will be okay. Number three, I learned, y'all, that I can survive without coffee. I am almost 19 weeks completely coffee free and I am thriving, thriving. And honestly, I don't see that I'm ever gonna go back to coffee. I still love how it smells. I admit, I still love how it smells, but I don't love what it was doing to me. It was causing me to be more anxious. It was causing me to not be able to be as calm. It was causing me to be more stressed. It was causing me to not sleep as well. And then all of those things like sleeping, not sleeping as well wasn't contribute to more stress and more anxiety. And so it was just this vicious cycle. So I learned that I can survive without coffee and that I'm really happy with just drinking my lemon water and drinking decaf chai latte and I'm good. Number four, I learned that I am more of a fashionista than I realized. You guys, for years I have said I'm not a fashionista. I'm a minimalist and I only like to have a few outfits and I like to wear the same thing over and over and over and over and over again and I get one look and that's all I wear. This year, as I challenged myself to step back from telling myself that is who you are and instead say, well, let's try something new. Because I had all these voices in my head that it was literally like this hat that I just like wore and let myself just, it was like blinders that I put on and I wore this thing and it was like, okay, this is who you are. You're a minimalist, you're frugal, you're not a fashionista. And I just wouldn't even think outside of that little box that I put myself in. And this year I said, I'm breaking free of that box and I'm gonna figure out who I am outside of this box that I've created for myself. And so I let myself try some new things, try some new hairstyles, try some new colors, try some new styles, and just let myself break free from that thing I told myself all my life of you're not a fashionista. And I still am not gonna go and get 50 pairs of shoes. I'm not going to have a huge whole walk-in closet full of clothes. That's overwhelming to me. I am somewhat of a minimalist, but I would say more that I'm a semi-minimalist and that I like trying some new fashions. I like trying some new styles. I like having more than a few outfits. I like wearing cute clothes. I like trying some of the things that are on trend a little bit. Number five, I learned that I can do scary things without being terrified. So you guys,
guys probably know if you've been watching my videos or you have um, read me online for a while, read me online, read my stuff online for a while, you know that I struggle with anxiety and it's something that I've had for basically all of my life and that I also have a lot of insecurity and kind of irrational fears that I struggle with. And one of those things is being in unknown situations or the fear of the unknown. So challenging myself to step outside my comfort zone, like going on that trip to Israel and Italy, which was way outside of my comfort zone. It's caused my comfort zone to really start to move and to really start to give me more confidence that I can go into situations where there are a lot of unknowns and I don't have to be scared to death. The book that I read last year called Presence by Amy Cuddy, where she talks about bringing your boldest and your bravest self to situations, really, really helped me. And she talks about how even just your body language makes such a difference. And she gives you lots of exercises and things you can do to bring confidence through your body language. And so I would say, start out by <laughs> faking it and fake it until you feel it. And the more that I made myself fake it, the more that I started to feel it and the less that I started to fear it. And number six, this goes right along with that one, I learned that I love volunteering at church. So I said that I wanted to get more involved in church even though that was definitely stepping outside my comfort zone. And um, some of the people at church came to me and asked me if I would help during the summer with volunteering in my girls class. And I thought, well, it's you know my daughters. And I asked them and they were like, yes, mom, we would love that. We would love it if you would volunteer in our class. So I said yes to just volunteering in the summer. And it was a really small commitment. I think they wanted me for five or six weeks and all I was gonna do was just be an assistant to one of the teachers, super easy. Well, I showed up and the first few weeks it was awkward. I didn't know the people, I didn't know what I was supposed to do. Everybody else seemed to know everybody else, but I learned to love it. And I ended up um, accepting a you know, position, not really position, but accepting the opportunity to be one of the teachers in the fifth and sixth grade room with boys and girls. There's about um, 30 to 40 boys and girls every Sunday, and, and um, there's three to four teachers. We kind of rotate through um, doing different parts of the lesson and bringing the teaching and the games and all that. And I have just loved that. Number seven. This probably wouldn't be a surprise to you guys, but it was a little bit of a surprise to me, and that was that I adore coaching other bloggers. I adore coaching other bloggers. I did not know that, really. Um, I blog for so long. This is, I'm going on my 12th year of blogging, I think. Um, and I kind of take it for granted that I have anything to offer other bloggers because I just sort of feel like, there are so many great books and programs and messages and blogs and all this stuff out there for other bloggers that what do I really have to bring to the table? Well, when I spoke at the business boutique events this year, I when there was the line of people and the women coming up and asking me all these questions about blogging, I realized I am so passionate about this. And then when their eyes would light up and they would be like, thank you, that is so helpful, thank you. And I'm thinking, I just told you something so simple. I thought everybody knew that, but I realized no. Not everybody knows that. And so I'm excited that in 2017, I am gonna be able to do more to help coach other bloggers. Number eight, I learned that I have outgrown my blog. And by that I mean that when I started the blog, it was very much for um, just helping people with cutting their grocery bill and just very simple, practical ways that they could save money. And over the years, I have so many different topics that I'm interested in and so much that I want to share that the blog has kind of become this really big conglomeration of all these different crazy <laughs> eclectic things because it's just been whatever I'm really interested in. And I think for people who are new, it's kind of confusing because they're like, wait, it's money saving mom. Why are we talking about this? Why is she blogging about this? I'm so confused. I'm coming here for saving money and now we're over here talking about this. And so I just really started to feel in 2016 that I wanted to have a new direction for my blogging and business and the future. And I was just like, what do I want the next five to 10 years to look like? And the clarity, it took months to come because I didn't want to just be like, oh, that's great idea, I should go do that. No, it was my year of rest, so I couldn't 
really do anything, but I wanted to clarify things. So I'm really excited to have that clarity this year. Number nine, I learned that I can thrive without sugar and chocolate, which is huge for me again, very huge. Um, I love homemade treats. I'm not like a candy bar person. I don't drink soda pop, nothing like that, but I love homemade brownies, cinnamon rolls, chocolate chip pancakes, pumpkin chocolate chip muffins, all the homemade goodies. I love them. As I was really analyzing, you know, just my year of rest, I, I realized that one of the areas in my life that I wanted to work on rebuilding was my health. So, um, Rachel, um, who is a follower, um, I met her, on, oh, I've actually known her for a long time, but kind of reconnected with her um, through Periscope and um, through blogging, she connected me with her nutritionist, Jason, and, and she just said, you know, this might be something for you to try. And I said, okay, I, I know I need to rebuild my health. Um, I know I have a lot of anxiety. I know that I pushed too hard for too many years. My health is kind of shot. And I want to do something for me this year. So 18, almost 19 weeks ago, um, I started working with Jason, uh, my nutritionist, and he put me on this cleanse and detox, made me go off coffee, made me eat tons of salad, tons and tons and tons of salad, drink a gallon of lemon water every day, eat so much garlic and ginger and all these other types of things like dandelion leaves and stuff. Um, and for the first few weeks, I was miserable. And I was like, this was the dumbest idea ever. Like, what was I thinking? Why did I say yes to this? This is so ridiculous. But I stuck with it because I had said I'm going to do it for two months. Because I figured if I didn't see any changes at the end of two months, you know, it was a good experiment. And now I can go back to eating what I normally eat and living like I normally live and just know that... <sighs> It's not for me. Well, at the end of five weeks, something big changed and I started to have so much more energy. I started to have so much more, um, just this new kind of zest for life. I felt really empowered. I felt really excited about life and I stopped craving all the sugar and chocolate and carbs. And I started wanting to eat things like salad and salmon. And I'm like, what is wrong with me? But it was true. I was able to get off all my medication that I'd been on, my 5-HTP for anxiety. Um, I had been on medication for allergies for years. I had been on medication for acne, for eczema. I was able to get off every single pill that I was on and feel amazing, have more energy than I'd had in years, ha um, have more clarity in my head than I'd ever had and feel so much better. Number 10, this is kind of going into that, is I actually do have time to take really good care of myself. I made excuses for so long for not prioritizing my health. And so by making the decision to hire Jason to start working with him, I made the commitment to prioritize my health. He, you know, makes me check in every single day. And he is always challenging me, you have got to step back. And one of the things with the fitness plan that he's done is he really challenged me at first as I was rebuilding my health not to push too hard because I'm the kind of person that is like, oh, I want to run three miles in 30 minutes. Okay, so I'm just going to go out there and I'm going to make myself do it. And he said, he's like, no, we're going to gradually work up to that and we're going to be gentle with your body. So he's really helped me to let go of a lot of those old patterns that I've had for years and years of not making my health a priority. And the thing that I've discovered, and I've said this for years, but I've really discovered it, is that when I make my health a priority, and when I take care of me, I'm so much better able to take care of other people. And so I'm so much better as a wife, as a mom, as a business owner, as a friend, because I have so much more joy. I have so much more life. I have so much more clarity in my brain. My brain is not going crazy with all this anxiety. I'm healthier overall, so I'm able to be a better mom, a better wife, a better friend, a better business owner better in all areas. And so taking care of me, prioritizing my health is a gift that I can give to all of those around me. So those are the 10 things that I learned in 2016. Most of them were pretty surprising. I look back on 2016 and I think I've changed so much and I'm really excited to see what 2017 is going to bring.